When we harvest branches for our stick insects, we can sometimes unknowingly bring home other invertebrates that were living on the collected branch. Some of these hitchhikers are completely harmless towards us and our phasmid pets, while others can be a potential danger. In this video, I will go through all the common hitchhikers that you might find on the branches of harvested eucalyptus and their level of danger. Let's start with lerps. A lerp is a structure of crystallized honeydew produced by larvae of psyllid bugs as a protective cover. The insect eats the leaves by sucking out the fluid and depositing a honeydew waste, and sometimes, depending on the species of psyllid, this crystallized honeydew structure can taste sweet. Because of their sweet taste, lerps have been eaten by humans for many centuries. The lerps themselves are not a danger to stick insects, although their sugary protective covers may attract ants, which could be a danger to your phasmids. The next thing we'll talk about isn't as friendly. Sooty mould. The most common mould you will find growing on your eucalyptus leaves is called sooty mould. This mould benefits from either a sugary exudate produced by the plant or fruit, or by honeydew secreting insects or sap suckers. It is vital to remove any leaves that you expect to have sooty mould because if your stick insects eat contaminated leaves, it can lead to death. Fungal growth may appear as white particles growing on the leaves, which will eventually turn to a soot grey colour. If you see fungal growth on the leaves, immediately remove infected leaves and check the body, especially the underside of the thorax, of each stick insect within the enclosure. If you see any fungal particles, gently wipe off with a damp paper towel or q-tip. It is important to remove as much of the fungal as possible, otherwise the fungal spores can enter through the exoskeleton via the pores. Once inside the insect, the fungus will begin to absorb all the liquid within the extatosomatiaritum like a sponge, which will result in death. Now let's move on to sawflies. Sawfly larvae cluster together during the daytime. If they are disturbed, they rear up and vomit a blob of yellowish liquid. This liquid is a concentrate of eucalyptus oils obtained from the leaves they feed on, which they store in a special sack until needed. The larvae eat eucalyptus leaves and usually start with the youngest leaves first on the tips of the branches. At night, they spread out to feed, but they keep in touch by using an equivalent of Morse code. They tap on the branches with the tips of the abdomen so that the other members of the group can feel the vibrations and know where they are so that they can reform the cluster before daylight. The yellow blob of liquid that the sawfly larvae vomit up when disturbed is only a mixture of eucalyptus oil, therefore it has no ill effect on phasmids whatsoever. Although the caterpillars are no threat to phasmids, they may decrease the nutritional value of the leaves that they eat. It is also advised to remove any sawfly larvae if you have very small phasmids. This is because very small phasmids may drown in the eucalyptus oil that the caterpillars produce if there is a large amount of it. Now let's talk about leaf blister sawflies. The larvae of leaf blister sawflies feed inside the leaves of a range of eucalyptus species. They create blister-like patches up to 5 square centimetres on the upper surface of the leaf. The only thing the larvae will do is decrease the nutritional value of the leaves in which they have created a mine in, so they are completely harmless to your phasmids. And now let's talk about galls. Galls form as a reaction to insects feeding on or their eggs being laid in plant tissue. When a female gall induced insect deposits her egg in the leaf or stem of a host plant, a biochemical reaction between the egg and the host may produce the gall, inside of which a hatching larva will feed. Or the larva may modify the plant's normal response to injury with salivary secretions, which stimulates the plant to grow the gall, resulting in food and shelter for itself. Gall-inducing insects themselves are not dangerous to phasmids, although the galls that they create may make it harder for your insects to consume affected leaves. The next hitchhiker we will talk about is the Australasian Green Shield Bug. 
Australasian green shield bugs lay their eggs in a cluster of up to 14. These eggs can either be a tan colour or even a pale green. Nymphs hatch from these eggs. First insta nymphs are like small black wingless adults. As the nymph grows, it molts its skin and becomes paler and paler until it gets a nice green colour. Green shield bugs are not considered a threat to phasmids, but should be removed and placed outside so they can live their lives. Insects in this group are true bugs belonging to the superfamily Membracoideae. There are many families and subfamilies of insects within this grouping, but the main family that are found on eucalyptus trees are in the Eurymolinae family. The Eurymolinae family are only found on eucalyptus trees. They are usually ant attended, which means ants protect them and feed on the sugary waste that the insects produce when they are sucking out fluids from the plant. The most common species are very dark purple or black with pale spots and their common name is black gum leaf hoppers. Tree hoppers are no threat to phasmids but because of their ability to attract ants it is recommended to remove any tree hoppers that you see on your harvested branch. Now let's move on to the cup moth. The brightly coloured cup moth caterpillar and its pupa's distinctive cup-shaped case make these insects stand out among the moths. They are commonly found feeding on eucalyptus but also feed on fruit trees. The spines on these caterpillars can give a painful sting. The stinging spines are found in clusters that the caterpillar retracts when they are not needed. When the caterpillar is disturbed, it pops out the rosettes of spines to sting whatever is disturbing it. The spines will not actually puncture your skin, but will break on impact and then release a poisonous compound that stings. Because of the stinging ability of cut moth caterpillars, it is advised to carefully remove them when you see them on your harvested branch before placing it in your enclosure. There are two groups of tortoise beetle that are common on eucalyptus trees, Peropsis and Peropsis sterna. The adults of Peropsis can be brightly coloured. The larvae of beetles in this genus and related species make the poisonous compound hydrogen cyanide. If you disturb tortoise beetle larvae, they will respond by arching their tails towards you, often with the drop of their defensive chemical at the end. Hydrogen cyanide and its effects on stick insects has not been studied, therefore a 100% certainty of its harmfulness towards phasmids cannot be certain. Because of this, it is advised to remove any tortoise beetle larvae and adults from your harvested eucalyptus branch before placing it into your phasmid enclosure. Caterpillars of this species are called loopers. These caterpillars make themselves shelters by curling over a leaf and holding it fast with silk threads. Usually the caterpillars are active at night, retreating into their shelters during the day. Caterpillars ready to pupate burrow into the soil near the tree they feed on. Autumn gum moth caterpillars pose no threat to phasmids, but they will decrease the nutritional value of leaves that they have eaten on. The silk that they create to use for their shelters can also be a hazard for young phasmids due to the risk of them getting stuck within the silk and not having the strength to break free. Because of this, it is advised to remove caterpillars if you have small phasmids. <laughs>